Hey everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and today I'm here with a video tutorial sharing the page setup panel in the Silhouette Studio software. If you have followed me, or if you have not, I do have a series called Let's Explore V4 that I started several years ago, where I go through each of the panels. It is in a written tutorial format for most of them, but I am updating things and having video tutorials here as well. You may not know it, but the page setup panel is one of the most important panels in the Silhouette Studio software. So I wanna show you what it entails and how I use it. So maybe that can help you in your future projects. Currently, I am using a version of software that is version 4.5. So if your software does not match exactly like mine, check out the links in the description below for details on previous software versions. So I'm using a version of 4.5.199. That is possibly a beta version, but any version of 4.5 is going to look like this, 4.5 and higher. Depending if you're even further down the road when you watch this video, it could also change from there as well. So each version of the Silhouette software could have a little bit different change. But check out the links in the description for more information. I do have tutorials for older software and how that looks. So looking at my Silhouette software, on the right hand side, you're going to see the page setup panel. It automatically opens when you first open the Silhouette Studio software. But if it is ever not there, you can simply click on the top icon on the right side and that opens your page setup panel. I'm going to be discussing just the first tab today and it just makes for too long of a video if we go through everything. So what you're going to see is you are going to have the options here for one through th three or four. The reason I mentioned that is because with 4.5, if you have a Cameo 4 model machine or a Portrait 3 model machine, and that is designated here in the top with your machine, if those objects are selected, you are going to see four options, and that is due to the auto sheet feeder, which I will also link more information in the description below on that. If you are an older machine user, so if I come in here and I select a legacy machine, such as a Cameo, you're going to see that it changes to options one through three. So this is another way that if you're watching tutorials or um, following along with a written tutorial, you may see that the page setup panel looks a little bit different. If they are using an older machine or have an older machine designated here, you may not see all of those options. I'm going to choose the Cameo 4, and that's going to give me the four options. So first is your machine that I've already discussed here. The second is your feed type. This only applies if you have an auto sheet feeder and you are using it. Number three is your cutting mat. You can select what size cutting mat that you are using. So if you're using a 12 by 24 mat, that's going to change on the screen. If you have no mat selected, so if I choose none, I want you to watch what happens on the screen. This is how I can tell when someone has their software set up incorrectly when they are using a cutting mat, but it is cutting too high. If I choose none, it now has no gray border around it. This is telling the software and your machine that you are cutting without a cutting mat and it's going to start cutting at the very top of your material. So let's toggle back and forth between that so you can see this on screen. If I choose a 12 by 12 cutting mat, whoops, wrong one, 12 by 12 cutting mat, here is my gray border. When you have a cutting mat designated on the page setup panel, that is telling your machine that it needs to pull the mat in a specific distance before it starts cutting. If it is not cutting in the correct location, check out the link in the description below on my print and cut video. It explains in it the different sizes of cutting mats if you're using a third party cutting mat. It can affect where it's going to start to cut. The Silhouette Studio software is specifically calibrated to a Silhouette cutting mat. There is a specific distance in the top margin and in the side margins, and the software knows exactly what that is. If you are using a third-party cutting mat, those margins are not always the same. And I actually show you 
three different kind brands of cutting mats in that video and I show you exactly how they do not line up. So if you're not getting accurate cuts where you think it should be cutting, this is usually the reason why. And then the next one used to be called page size. It is now called media size. This is where you can tell it what size media you are using. Below that, you can set up a custom media size. So if my media is eight inches by eight inches, I can select that on the screen and you can see that my white page, my media size changes to eight by eight. Oftentimes I will see someone who has opened up a file on their software and it automatically changes their media size or the page size, whichever software you're using, to a one by one inch square and it will not let you cut outside of that square. The easy fix is to check your media size. So if I come over here, choose letter size, it's going to adjust to that letter size. So whatever your white is showing on the screen, that is the media size of the material that you are telling the software you are using. Now, a cool feature here is called transparency. And I use this often in the software when I'm designing. The reason why is because when I slide that transparency slider up, it reveals my cutting mat grid. This is how I can place multiple colors on one cutting mat for it to cut. Now let me show you here on the screen, I'm gonna change this to a 12 by 12 sheet. If I'm cutting multiple colors, and I will link to a video tutorial that I've already done on how to exactly use this feature and how I do it all the time, I slide the transparency up, I use the grid on my cutting mat, which will line up exactly with a silhouette cutting mat, Again, other third-party mats will not line up the same, so your cuts will be off. But a silhouette cutting mat, when loaded properly, should cut exactly where you place your design. Now, it's going to be off by just a little bit because of human error, because of how you're loading your cutting machine um, most often times. But I get that to line up. You know, usually I will place a material here in the two by two square, place my design here, as I show in that video tutorial that's linked below. It's how to cut multiple colors at once with Silhouette. This helps me for saving time, and it also helps to save the adhesive on my cutting mat because I'm not ripping off, off a full sheet of 12 by 12 materials every single time. I cut my materials down to the size I need. Sometimes I make a mistake, but the more you practice with it, I've been doing this method for the last nine plus years with working with cutting machines and I, it's how I work all the time. So I wanted to share that with you. So transparency is where it reveals, and it was called reveal in older software, reveals your cutting mat grid. Now, constrained media to mat is one that was introduced in version four of the Silhouette software. And it is a little bit confusing. It's kind of very difficult to explain, <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change this. So if I change it and I make my media size higher than my actual cutting mat. Uh, let's see if I can get a good. It's If I check that, it's going to then automatically constrain the media to the cutting mat. So even if I entered 24 inches, see unchecked, I have 24 inches. It is not going to cut past where my cutting mat is. When you have constrained media to cutting mat, that is exactly what it means. It's going to alter the dimensions you have entered and it's going to place that onto your cutting mat. So let's take another look at this example. So if I move this back, the height of eight inches, and I change the top, which is the width, which is left to right width of your cutting machine, if I were to enter this at 15 inches, you can see with it unchecked on the screen, it hangs off of the cut edge of the cutting mat. If I click Constrain Media to Mat, it's going to adjust that back to my cutting mat. So my Cameo 4 uh, that I have selected cannot cut a width higher than 12 inches. So it's going to constrain your media to the cutting mat size that you have selected.
Next is your orientation. This is your page orientation. So if I come up here, I'm going to set this at letter size. Currently the default on my computer is the portrait orientation. That is the, the height is the longer portion. It is in portrait orientation. The, if I select landscape, it's going to make the longer section to the landscape orientation or left to right. So this is orientation here is in reference to your page. Now the one that is very confusing since version 4.3 and higher is when you are trying to cut with a 24 inch mat or this affects portrait three users or portrait users more. But I'm going to set up this example. So I'm going to choose a cutting mat of 12 by 24 inches. And then what I wanna do is I'm going to set my page size to automatic 12 by 24 and zoom out here a little bit. So let's just bring a design onto my screen. Actually, I'm just gonna draw, let's see. Let's just type in create. And let's fill this with color. And I want my create to go landscape on my material. In the past software, you could just tell it to do that. You could just um, rotate this on the screen, it would be fine. So one way you can do it is this way. But most people don't like to turn their head. So I'm gonna undo that. If I change this to landscape, I want you to see what happens on the screen. So if I simply change my page size, my media size to landscape, it adjusts my mat on the screen. However, if I come down here and I click show cut border, what you're going to see is there's a red line right in the middle of my mat. So even though I turned my media to landscape, the width now shows as 24 inches. That is wrong because the machine cannot cut a width greater than 12 inches. Even though it shows right here, this is why this red cut border shows up. So I'm going to change it back to portrait mode and you'll see my text is not how I want it. You're going to come down here to the rotate. I'm gonna skip the media color for just a second. Come down to rotate and you need to rotate your cutting mat to the direction that you want it to go. So if I rotate, you can see the black arrow is always the top of your cutting mat, no matter what direction it's facing. So I want to rotate my cutting mat and then I'm going to rotate my design to fit. And then you can see my cutting border is around the outer edge. So that is one thing that we see that was a huge change from version 4.3. Now, it's technically a bug in the software, but now it's been in the software for three, six years, depending on how, when you're watching this video. So technically a bug, but not really. Now, it does make sense if you think about it. Your machine cannot cut wider than 12 inches. So if you rotate your mat, your width is still 12 inches. And that's the biggest hold up here. So now I skipped this media color. This is a new option that came in version 4.4 and higher. Um, you can change your media color. This was asked for by users who wanted to create mockups or to see what a design would look like on a particular color. So if I do click on this, changes my media size to purple, and then I can see what that is going to look like on with my design on top of it. It doesn't print, it um, doesn't show up, it doesn't cut, it simply just changes the color of your media. And here, I'll change it to purple, I'll decrease the opacity on here, or increase the transparency, and then you can see it functions the exact same way as if it was white. So it just gives you a different option. Users said it was too hard to draw a square behind their design, so they simply added a media color into that so you can change that as needed. 
So we covered the rotate, rotate your mat. Your black arrow is always the top of your cutting mat. And then we have briefly talked about our show cut border. Let me change this again so it's easier to see. Come back here, see, you can see that my text is still rotated. And then show cut border shows a red line around the outer edge of your cut cuttable area. Now, when you first open your software as a default, if I come down here to this little preferences, and I'm including more than I really originally meant to include on this, but if you come over here to the defaults, there's a section in those preferences that says cut to edge of page. This is unchecked as a default in the software when you first open it. So when you first open your software, you're going to see that this red border is not out to the very edge of your paper or your material, your cutting mat area. So it, it's like a 16th of an inch inset. You can simply change that in the bottom right is a gear icon, that's your preferences panel. It can also be found up top here. I use it through the gear icon most often. Defaults, check cut to edge of paper, click apply if you have apply and hit okay. And then you're going to see that red cut border go to the very edge. Again, this is gonna be the most prominent when you start working with larger medias or if you're in using the portrait. You wanna watch for where that red cut border is. And if you come into a situation where you are using a 12 by 24 inch cutting mat and you simply use the rotate option, you are the orientation option, you're going to see that red cut border is right down the middle of your design. It's not going to allow you to cut past that. And I'll give this a little demonstration here. If I bring this back and I place it on my mat, when I go to send, you're going to see that it will only cut half of that. And that is due to the orientation of the cutting mat. The width is set higher then the width of the machine can cut. So back to portrait and then rotate your mat as needed and your design as needed. Now I'm going to come back here to a 12 by 12 mat. We don't need this. And I want to give an example of your letter size. Let's say we're doing a print and cut. Show print border is one that I would suggest for your print and cut projects or anytime you're printing. Show print border is a gray border that turns on, set according to the printer that is connected to your computer. So it sets those print margins according to your specific printer, which means that everybody's will vary. I have a borderless printer, so if I go in and I turn borderless printing on, it will adjust my print border out. So you wanna keep that in mind. If you have a object on your screen that is outside of your print border, it is not going to print through your printer. So you wanna keep in mind that print border option. Gray is your print border, red is your cut border. The gray print border does not affect your cutting ability. The red cut border does. So that is a little bit longer than I wanted to get into, but I hope those tips have helped Check the description below for more information. I also have a written tutorial where you can see photos of this as well. Thanks for joining me. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell for notifications. Until next time, I hope you get into the software and just start playing. Have a great day. Thank you.